Good morning. We have had an incredible, incredible start to this day. It's around noon right now, and I spent the past two or three hours just completely working on myself. It all started off with reading 10 pages in The Slight Edge, the book that homie sent me the other day that's just got my motivation through the absolute roof. And it reminded me that I failed a lot of things that I was making claims on this month. One of those being the 40 day challenge, which I had to stop doing because my legs couldn't even move after that day I got stuck in the back country in Utah with Scotty Lego and had to hike out for like two hours. The next day I couldn't even walk. So I stopped doing the challenge and then next thing you know, I wasn't doing it at all because the point of that challenge was that it takes about 40 days to build a habit. But the key to success is failure and we failed that miserably. So I'm starting that back up. Day one today, we just did a hundred of those. Also did a bunch of meditating, stretching, rolling out. We've been eating good. We got the coffee going, the CBD. Right now we're about to open up a couple boxes here before we go to the mountain and I'm gonna do something for you guys today. I'm gonna do the most highly requested video tutorial that I've ever gotten, which is how to hit rails for beginners. Not on a box, but on a rail. So we're gonna go to Boreal and we're gonna do that because you guys are legends and I would not be able to be traveling the world and doing all the stuff that I do if I didn't have the support from you guys and I feel better, I feel great, so now I have the energy to do something that's gonna benefit hopefully all of us, especially you guys. But first things first, we gotta open this box. GoPro, customer support, thank you very much yet again for another goal pull, voila. And numero dos is this giant caja. Who do we think it's from? We already know who it's from. We got a fresh Lego snowboards. The shred stick, 155 reverse camber. He's claiming it's not that much of a reverse. How's my driving? So we will see. Oh, that's not too bad at all. Yeah, this thing is sick. I am so hyped right now. In the next couple days, we will test that thing out for you guys, and I'll let you know how the rocker is on the Lego Shred Stick 155 that I just got in. But not today, because we are gonna go to Boreal right now. We are going to give you guys the best tutorial you've ever seen. Let's get into that, guys. Dude, we got JB out here, absolutely stoked on the vlogs, bro. What do you gotta say right now, my man? Casey, so blessed to be a part of witnessing what you're doing, man. Don't even stop a bit. And everybody's watching this, tell all your friends to watch this vlog because it's on fire. Get it. My guy, do some vlog, brother. Great to meet yeah, you, Yeah, yeah, you too, for sure, man. you heard it now you've seen it the so one day I try to come and do the tutorial for you guys the park is completely getting broken down and rebuilt and the small park even isn't open and they're rebuilding that one so I don't know what I'm gonna do maybe I'm gonna try to link up some old board side clips with some new audio for you guys but one way or another we're doing this tutorial and you guys are getting taught how to do a board slide on a rail for the first time today. Right. Trying to get a clip in, bro? Yeah, let's you gotta it. say. Yo, bro, follow this guy's vlogs because he's the shit. He stays up in the local dopest mountains and he's in the east and west coast, coast My to coast, guy, baby. bro. You got it, man. Nice this to meet the you, biggest dude. shredder out, dude. Yes. Shredder out. Have a good day, yeah, homie. Welcome. I appreciate the love, bro. I 
found a little nook here hidden from the wind where I'm gonna do my best to give you guys all the tips and tricks that I have for improving your board slides on rails. And if you have not already gotten board slides on boxes, then you don't wanna be doing them on rails. Boxes are 100 times easier and they're so crucial for learning the main steps that you have to do in order to get your board slides unlocked. So if you haven't seen the video that I made on how to board slide a box, I'll leave the link right here. You can click that video, go watch that first. But for now, before I jump into this, the main thing that I have to stress which I always stress whenever I do any tips or how-to videos is that there are some things that will help you get the trick down better and some little tips that are very crucial in fixing maybe going to fakie or slipping out on the rail, but there's nothing more important and more crucial than time on a board and practice. Get out there as much as you can, literally do it in your carpet, at your house, whatever you can, time on a board is the number one thing in trial and error, just doing it over and over again, repetition while applying some good tips that you get maybe from a YouTube video like this. So we're gonna jump into this. I'm assuming that the rail that you guys are hitting is gonna be urban style, meaning that you have to ollie from the side of the rail because if you go straight on from the front, your nose will hit it. So an urban style board slide, I wanna say the best rail that you can start on is most of the Corinthia Park square metal rails. They're about four inches wide or 10 centimeters, whatever you use. And you're gonna to wanna to go for a backside board slide first. It's way easier than a frontside board slide to clear up any confusion real quick between the difference of a backside and a frontside board slide. I'm regular, so I'm going this way, facing towards you guys. If the rail is behind me, when I come to hop onto it and I jump on, that's a backside board slide. If the rail is in front of you and you come to jump onto the rail, that's a front side lip slide or a front side board slide. The lip slide means you jump over the rail, the board slide means you just turn 90 onto it. We're not gonna jump into anything over that because it just gets way more confusing, but basically, if you're approaching a rail, the rail's behind you or it's in front of you, that's a backside or a front side board slide. Backside board slide is a lot easier because you're facing down the hill and you're not blind. So the first step that I wanna say is the most crucial thing coming in to a backside board slide is you make sure that your board is parallel with the rail. If your board is angled a little bit to the left and the rail is pointing straight, you're gonna go where your nose is pointed. So when you pop on, you're gonna board slide, you're gonna slide off to the left if your nose is pointing to the left. Everything I'm saying, by the way, is for regular riders right now, so just reverse it if you're goofy footed. The second most important thing is keeping your eyes locked onto the end of the rail before you pop. So when you're approaching the rail with your board parallel with the rail, and you go to pop on, before you pop on, look at the end of the rail because that's where you're going. The third most crucial thing is when you pop, you need your weight of your upper body to already be falling over where the rail is, not the weight of your lower body. So you're approaching the rail, the rail's behind you, you start to fall a little bit backwards over the rail, just enough to get your weight to where it's gonna be centered over the rail. The fourth step, which is the most crucial step of every single rail trick you're gonna ever do on a snowboard is when you pop off your heels, your edge is gonna be locked in just enough, a little degree so that you're pointing straight and you're not washing out. When you pop, you need to pop your nose up over the front of the rail that you're about to get on and before you shift your board, you need to make clear, precise, confident choice and decision and everything about it that your board and your nose of your board is over the rail. I'm not even gonna tell you what will happen if it's not, but just remember, pop, make sure your nose is up and over the rail, then you shift. The other most crucial, crucial, crucial thing for board sliding on a snowboard, with every type of board slide, is there are two ways to do a rail slide. There is a 50-50, and then if you turn your board 90 degrees, 90 degrees, not 95, not 85, not 87, not 89, 90 degrees is a board slide. There is no other way to do it. You have to be 90. If you pop onto a rail and you're not at 90, you are going to get annihilated, especially if you don't detune your board. The whole detuning of the board thing is a completely different video that I have not done, but you could probably search on YouTube how to detune a board. If you're only hitting rails, it's a great idea to detune your board. If not, if you're hitting jumps a lot, 
it's not a good idea to detune your board. I'm somewhere in the middle. I take a file and I detune my board. And after some time, they make something called a gummy stone and you can slide that back and forth on your edge and it just fine tunes it and it takes out the burrs that you get from not being 90 in a board slide. Approaching once again, your knees are gonna be a little bit bent. Remember, you're falling backwards over the rail because your upper body weight is what's going to be leading the whole board slide. Once you pop up and your nose is over the rail and you shift to 90 degrees is when your board is gonna start coming down on the rail. Now, everybody does it different, but I'm claiming the only way to do a board slide on a snowboard and the best way and the most balanced and stylish way is on a binding. If your binding is on the rail, you're kind of just standing, balancing on the rail, and you can use your back foot to either put pressure down or up, depending on if you're gonna slide off of the rail. So once you pop off your feet with your knees bent a little bit, locked into your heel edge, and you wait and your nose is over the rail, and you shift to 90, because your body weight was already falling over, your lower body is going to be stoked that it's meeting up with your upper body, and you're gonna land placing your front foot right on the rail. I cannot stress enough how crucial it is to make sure that your board is flat on the rail, not on an edge up or down. Either one of those yielding terrible results. You can legitimately land flat on a rail and spin completely butter 360 without catching an edge as long as you're flat. The way to make sure that you stay flat is 100% by bending your knees and tilting the angle of your ankle. Your ankle has not much because you're in snowboard boots, but it has enough to tilt up and down. And if you lean forwards or backwards, that's not gonna help. You're either gonna catch or you're gonna fall. What I do is I use my front foot while balanced on the rail underneath the binding to center my whole body weight. My back foot, I push up and down with depending on if I'm gonna lean one way or another. If I start to fall off to my right, I can pick my back foot up and lean my body over the rail more, causing it to be more blunted and maintain that board slide through either a kink or a down or a flat. But all you need to know more than anything is that your board is going to be flat on the rail. Just like if you dropped it on a carpet, your board is flat. That's the most crucial thing to the board slide. Really, the initiation, the takeoff, the pop, the edge hold, the waiting, the rail underneath your binding, the knees bent, the looking at the end of the rail is all of the crucial, crucial, crucial tips that you're gonna need to help you get through your first board slide on a rail. Once you've done all that, the rail could be 500 miles long. The only thing that's gonna happen if all those things are correct is you're gonna slide off to the left or you're gonna slide off to the right. I guess I should explain getting off of the rail and the issue with going to fakie. This is very, very well described in the board slide on a box video, but it's all about the shoulders. When I'm coming in for a board slide and I wanna go back to regular, I leave my shoulder just as it is right now and I shift with my legs so that while I'm board sliding and I get to the end of the rail, because I didn't shift my upper body, it wants to snap my legs back to regular. If you wanna to go to fakie, or if you're having issues consistently going to fakie, it's because when you hop on the rail, your shoulders open. So when you pop on and you land in it, you wanna keep going. Your body wants to keep going. You probably wanna go back to regular, but it's not up to you. You've already initiated your shoulder opening, coming into the rail. Now that you're board sliding, you're going to fakie. So it's simple as that. If you wanna take your board slide back to regular, leave your front shoulder closed when you hit the rail. If you wanna take it to fakie, leave it open. There's a million other tricks that this leads into. If you wanna learn how to 270 out the same way or opposite pretzel 270 out the other way, leave some comments. Let me know what other trick tips you guys wanna see in the future. Leave some comments. Let me know how terrible this was or if it helped you at all and some other maybe tips that help you that I missed in this one. All that I wanna leave you guys with and make sure that you remember is full confidence 100% of the time. Make sure your board is parallel when you're approaching the rail. Make sure you look at the end of it. Lean over with your upper body first. Pop heavy. Make sure your nose is up and over the rail before you shift it. Make sure you shift it 90 degrees so that you land perfectly adjacent to the rail. Binding on the rail. That's your balance point. Make sure your board is flat not tilted at all either way and you do that by bending at the waist and tilting your ankle and your hips. 
let it absorb anything that's happening. You can hit a nine kink. As long as you guys are loose down low and your back is up and proper, you're gonna get through it. When you get to the end of it, depending on your shoulders when you came into it is what's gonna happen, but just pop out, throw a little steez on it, throw that back arm around, slam it down, and you just did your first board slide ever. The most crucial things are just continuing riding and continuing practicing. You're gonna get smoked a couple times, and that's fine. You rock a helmet, you rock the proper gear, and you'll get up, it'll buff out, and you'll be back out there. Hope you guys are stoked. Hope you guys got some tips or some help out of this. I wanna make a huge announcement right now that week one of Woodward Summer Camp at Woodward at Tahoe Boreal, I am going to be assistant coaching and also there just as a guest pro rider. In one week, we will have a promo code for you guys with a couple hundred dollars off the session. And it supports me and it supports you. And if you guys wanna get good at snowboarding, you gotta do it in the middle of the summer when everybody else is taking off days or riding jet skis and you're just out there getting backside board slides prime on lock. There's no better way to get better at a trick than in slushy summer style conditions and it's going to be snowboarder mag week so there's going to be all the big dogs and super 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 stoked to be able to help you guys out with a little discount and hope to see you guys all there. Give it one week. I will give you guys that promo code. I'll announce it in the blog and hope to see you guys this summer. We're going to go back to the crib right now though and we are going to whip up some grub, neutralize the neck, which is a massive tip as well. If you wanna get good at anything in life, up your meditation game, up your positive thinking, up your nutrients, and uh, yeah, it'll overall improve every aspect of your life. Stretching, rolling out, all that stuff helps, and I'm honored and blessed to be in a position where I can give you guys the tips or advice that will help you benefit and improve not only your snowboarding, but your quality of life. For the dream. A lot of negative.